Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires today we've got a battle of the discounts as Doubt playing as the Chinese in red gets ready to take on MBL playing as the Hindustanis in blue. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings which by the way we'll explore as well with them once we get through the Civ introductions and try to get their butts up to Castle Age ASAP because we are on Empire Wars yet again today. Why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup we will be watching today. Now the Chinese are a classic OG civilization whose broad tech tree and infamous progressive tech discounts mean players have a lot of options on how to crush their enemies. Their farms come with more food, their town centers support a bigger population, and they start the game with uh, three extra villagers. Looks like we might have the first kill of the game shortly. Yeah, we do as uh, MBLs, Hindustani scout, guns down doubts amidst this... Uh, very peaceful, very idyllic looking fishing village that uh, Doubt has created to the north of his base. Now, in exchange for starting the game with three extra villagers, they do get 200 less food and 50 less wood. Now, although their gunpowder roster is overall kind of weak, their unique unit, the Foot Archer Chukanu, makes up for it by being a pretty badass unit that fires multiple arrows at its opponents. Speaking of Doubt's opponent, we've got MBL playing as the Hindustan. He's a sieve that pushes its players towards a composition of gunpowder and camels. Their hand cannoneers are tankier and can be upgraded to get extra range. Their camels attack faster, can be upgraded to be Imperial Camel Riders, which are stronger versions of the already awesome heavy camel riders. Oh, and by the way, if your opponent goes archer units, as uh, we may, uh, I'm going to guess we're going to see a few archers out of our Chinese in red. Well, then the Hindustanis can rely on their second unique unit, the Ghulam, whose high pierce attack and attack bonus against archers will shred through enemy lines, especially if those units are clumped, since the Ghulam's attack does inter injure multiple units at once. Now, in order to afford their powerful but resource-intensive army, Hindustani villagers do get progressively cheaper as the game goes on, and they can upgrade... Oh, <laughs> Doubt replies with the quick-fingered garrison, and down go the two original scouts... As I was saying, Hindustani villagers get progressively cheaper as the game goes on, and they can roid up their economy by increasing the speed of all gold income and lowering their commodity trading fee to be the second best in the game after my beloved Saracens, whose commodity trading fee, their VIG, is fixed at 5%. Those are the two civilizations. I am testing out some truncated, some shortened civilization introductions because on Empire Wars, the action starts very, very quickly. And speaking of the action, let's take a look at our playing field, our battlefield, a map, a new one that we, uh, at least I haven't casted on the channel just yet, called Dune Springs, which is very aptly named because if you look at this in the center, it kind of does look like the gaping maw of Shai Hulud itself here. And so the word Dune in the name is quite, quite apropos. It is MBL who is circling the south of the base already attacking with a fire galley, a few galleys to support. Now, I believe on this map, the galleys, the navy, can't encroach onto these shallow ponds with all of their shore fish because of the sandbar, but they can reach some of these villagers, especially if those villagers get a little bit too comfortable, a little bit too close to the water's edge. Both players are now heading up to Castle Age. Our Chinese player does have one extra villager. He is on the whole about 20 seconds ahead of his opponent. Still has this annoying army to the back that has accomplished a diddly squat. By the way, in Empire Wars, since everyone starts with certain infrastructure, houses, a blacksmith, a barracks, in this case, a mill over here next to the fish, it's pretty cool to see how they spawn. This is a very interesting spawn, a very pleasing on the eye spawn for our Hindustani. Whereas our uh, Chinese, I noticed their structures were a little bit more clumped. Not too sure how all of that random generation works at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, down goes a Chinese archer. Doc continues to get pressed into. Now these fire galleys should be able to reach the villagers who are repairing it. Unless maybe they... No, even if they're here, the fire galley can sneak into the right. And so this dock is going to fall, but three fire galleys inside a demo raft and two more fire galleys will greet this Hindustani navy. Boom goes the dynamite as Doubt hits back, lashes out, and the galleys have to get the hell out of here because there are now four fire ships to two. I should say four fire galleys to two fire galleys. And these three basic galleys are not going to accomplish very much against fires, which uh, have a lot of armor 
and attack mighty, mighty quickly. F you to this particular house, the second in the row of these townhouses. That Spearman put in an offer. He was outbid, and so now he is taking out his aggression as medieval people know how with an attack and violence. Not exactly the most civilized of games as Age of Empires, drawing us back to the, the, the recesses, the depths of human nature. Interestingly, both players in Castle, both players research, researching War Galley to get their uh, navies a little bit stronger, a little bit better. As in all dual water slash land maps, it's always curious to see whether or not the water gets contested. And if it is contested, how much contesting will there be as, ooh, is that really worth it? Two demos against two fires? I mean, I say as con how contested it's going to be. Doubt is uh, a little wood starved at the moment. And so he is just training one fire galley. Spearman lurking to the south of the Hindustani base catches a spy and kills him. This army we saw moving out a little bit, a bit of a ranged force, not really accomplishing too much. They're going to see the knight as he pops out of the ether. Will they attack? No, they're just going to hang out, waiting until he's right up in their grill before they fire some arrows. Even one knight is going to have a bit of a difficult time taking on this ridiculously weak but numerically superior feudal age army. Okay, never mind. Uses his mobility to get the hell out of there. MBL firmly invested in the water game right now. Five galleys, two fires, and a demo. Upgrades on them, plus two attack and range since he does have Bodkin. But Doubt's here to the north of his base. Doubt is <laughs> the weak feudal age train of units here. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. I thought for sure the skirmisher was going to die, but never mind. Never mind, indeed, as this Hindustani Navy presses into the shoreline. There's still one dock. Why is he not attacking it? It looks like the knights here have also been cleaned up. Cleaned up by... No, not you. You are a uh, fresh camel. Not by the town center. So maybe they haven't been cleaned up. Maybe they just ran away back home. And our Hindustani MBL in blue takes not only firm control of the water, but so much aggression out of him he is at 17 army count to eight he's down about 15 percent villager count is he paying attention yes he is splits up his war galleys one goes boom at the same time the camel the counter to the knight does get surrounded counter or not numbers will prevail second town center for our chinese third town center for our chinese second town center for a hindu standing by the way one incredible feature on the Chinese town center now after I think the two patches ago three patches ago seven extra tiles of of line of sight on these guys makes them absolutely incredible plus seven is ridiculous and so they can see enemies coming from a mile away <laughs> that could have been a lot worse than that ultimately was a demo for a night but in come the camels hut 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 they go as they attack 20 percent faster Compared to the usual two-second delay, they are at a 1.67. And addressing one of my main concerns about camel units on the whole, which is not only are they not good at killing anything other than their counter, but they absolutely suck at attacking buildings. Hindustani camels do come with a plus two building attack bonus, which, uh, like Saracen foot archers, makes them pretty scary in the early castle age. Who will blink first as a standoff ensues these villagers... Huffing, huffing glue, attacking a skirmisher. Come on, somebody spring into action. I don't know what the hell's going on here. A bit of a <laughs> standoff. I would say a Mexican standoff, but there's a, there's no Mexican civ in this game. And so they continue to stare at each other. Okay. No, never mind. Now they spring into action. I'm glad I caught that. Swords are out. Four versus one. Spearman dies. And so with him go the expeditionary forces of our Chinese player. He was building four docks, very exposed docks on the western side of this lake. In come the camels. Out go the camels. Let's take a look at what's going on around the map, because action seems to be centered not only on the water, but like I said, it is MBL, who is now ha with an army three times bigger than his opponent, who is unfortunately housed. Oh, MBL is housed again. 
but not the not the end of the world to be housed when your population is the same as your opponent's or uh, approximately the same he's down 18 villagers though so long term this is going to be problematic for our hindustani even with that discount on villagers it used to be very easy for me to remember that discount 5 10 15 20 now not so much 8 13 18 23 I don't know who comes up with these numbers over at uh, World's Edge or Microsoft, but <laughs> it makes remembering them a little bit more difficult, but that's why we have notes. That's why we prepare. As the camels continue moving south, it looks like the knights are being chased. The camel with the faster speed here will catch up, but it looks like the knight did turn around. Or actually, never mind. It looks like the Chinese produced a camel of his own. I thought the knight sniped one of the camels by turning around, but no, it's an, in fact a Chinese camel that bit the dust. Four spearmen do shoo away these camels again. Look at the attack. Look at the attack on a castle age unit. Six base compared to the pikeman's four base. And the pikeman, by the way, also does bonus damage against camels. Plus 18. Two flanking town centers by our Hindu stand by our Hindu standing here. So MBL is trying to take firm control of the map right now. He's got, again, control of the water. 17 of his 34 military is in the water. So when I, you know, I, I should have qualified when I said he had three times the size of uh, army. <laughs> Demo. I don't think he got anything accomplished except some HP reduced from a camel unit. So when I say MBL's army count is three times bigger, I should have qualified that by saying a whole chunk of it is here in the center doing uh, very little to advance the game here especially with only three fishing ships if he had a vibrant fishing industry if each one of these docks were surrounded by nine or ten fishing ships and fishing traps i would say it's worth it to keep a navy around but with three fishing ships gathering this dorado okay interesting i didn't know that's the name of that cool looking fish there you go you learn something new every day with age of empires another town center okay MBL playing it very Sicilian style, hoping to call a first Hindustani crusade at some point. He's now attacking the town center, which got a little bit too close to the shoreline. Do ships have bonuses? Again, yeah, massive bonuses. I remembered it was decent. I didn't realize it was plus seven. That is a decent attack bonus against buildings. Camels chase villagers, but again, they are so weak against anything other than cavalry that I don't even think they're going to get this one villager. Oh, and maybe not. Maybe not. I was right. I was right, but all for the wrong reasons. I was right because of the garrison town center gunning down three camels scared our Hindustani away. He is down 20 villagers. Now it is Doubt's turn to be housed. Uh, okay, these players taking turns as to who can block themselves the best. Crossbows to the right, camels to the left. They do get a villager. They back away. They see the pikemen. But are there a few weaker villagers here? Okay. I gripe a lot about the camels. But at the end of the day, honestly, if I had to choose any civilization's camels to attack villagers, it would be the Hindustani. The camel rider is a six. I think the heavy camel rider is a base attack of a seven. And then the imperial, I think, jumps up to eight. Which may not necessarily make the cost of the upgrade worthwhile. It is a very expensive upgrade. Camel to heavy camel is fairly cheap. I think, uh, like, just under 700 resources. But the heavy camel to imperial camel upgrade is ludicrously expensive. And your attack jumps, I think, from a 7 to an 8. But you also get 20 extra HP and, I believe, a faster attack. Although, don't quote me on the faster attack part. I think it's just the HP and the extra plus one attack castle up for our Chinese Parth uh, thumb ring for the 30 crossbows that he's building ballistics and pat leather archer armor okay the fishing fleet has grown in size we've got seven fishing ships now crossbows finishing their tour of the hindustani land have now done a full rear surveillance program uh-oh uh-oh there's a lot of villagers here but a few crossbows to respond as well and camels too what are the upgrades like plus two zero to plus two plus two our hindustani's upgrades a lot better but doubts on the high ground camels notoriously have very bad armor base of zero zero which makes them very flimsy but as a meat shield perhaps mission accomplished oh 
<laughs> I love that MBL is just not shy about throwing villagers into the meat grinder, although I say that right away. They move past the crossbows. Now they look like they want to attack. Yeah, they are attacking. I absolutely love this. This is something that I've said many a time since I've started the channel. Uh, players just don't like to throw villagers at military. And sometimes, sometimes you have to. What can I tell you? Sometimes you really do have to. Ooh, he discovers or already has seen the outpost, making no effort to take it down. Looks like the town center on the northern flank has been destroyed. The one to the south in firm, firm control of the lake is MBL, who now has one fire ship, three demos, and 15 war galleys hanging out, not doing much. Crossbow's attacking to the south. Looks like that Mangonel that was prowling looking for a kill did get got by these camels who racked up five kills so far. Okay, the players have kind of disengaged a bit of a soft disengagement here. Let's take a look around the map because on the mini map, both players look like they've expanded about the same size. 31 army count to 33, whereas our Chinese player has firmly invested into land with Chukanus. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's see Chukanus. It's one of those units you really, you really need to see. It's it just such a badass unit. Not the greatest range in the world, but the base model fires three arrows. The elite model fires five arrows. They do zero melee damage, similar to a Kipchak's arrow. So they take down Siege in the blink of an eye. And both players are now heading up to Imperial off the back of 19 extra, 17 extra villagers. It is our Chinese player in red who will hit it first. And a whole bunch of stables means that Doubt may want to start attacking the economy of his opponent. Or at the very least, might want to start countering some of these Hindustani camels. Now, countering the Hindustani camel with a Chinese camel. Ooh, risky if your opponent does go up to the Imperial camel, but... It doesn't look like that's what's happening. We're getting light cavalry for our Chinese. We're getting elite skirmisher for our Hindustani. So they're trying to counter each other's armies here. These uh, crossbows just kind of moving around. How many kills? Three economic kills only. But they find a juicy quarry. They should be enough to one-shot villagers now, by the way. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, goodness gracious. No, not like this. Not like this, quarry miners. Elite skirmishers pop out of the two archery ranges that are here. Another villager. Another villager wants blood. Um. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yours truly is silenced by the move command. I thought maybe he's moving into their minimum range. But no, there's a lot of moving out of our Chinese. And there's a lot of dying out of our Chinese whose crossbows now become arbalists just in time to lose a whole bunch of them. Speaking of losing a whole bunch en route to this castle, looks like there have been a few minor battles. Hey, Pikemen, get your asses into order and start attacking. Get your asses into line, I mean, and start attacking. Okay, so instead of getting murder holes, our Hindustani in blue just places a tower to defend here. Now, what red can do is just move over here. <laughs> oh my god, that is being so annoying. And that is exactly what he does. He moves just outside the, the perimeter. Now the navy of our Hindustani is going to get destroyed, especially if he just keeps attacking with one ship at a time. And now the map is flaring up. Ghulams are out. We're getting to see all the cool units, but a whole bunch of Chinese light cap pop out and should be enough to take down the Ghulams as cool as the Ghulams are. Blast with is one tile radius. They do trample damage. And what's their attack bonus against archers? Five. Although no archers there at the moment. They are instead being greeted with a lot of light cavalry that is just about to catch out a whole bunch of skirmishers. Doubt sees it. He rips off a contingent of a lucky number seven light cavalry units that move in. Camels move in to intercept as the light cav destroy the outpost here. And of the seven brave, brave light cavalry units that rode forth, sallied forth like Don Quixote himself. Only two survived to tell the tale. But now the Arbalests are out. They should be able to pick off these camels quite well. And MBL doesn't really have anything to counter these uh, trebuchets. He is going up to heavy camel rider. Like I said, not the most expensive upgrade in the game. 
And this is what I thought that would do. This is why I thought he went light cav in the first place. Is to absolutely start pulling MBL apart. So let's see what's going on around the map to the south. This town center is now under attack. Just like the one to the north fell. It looks like this one is going to fall as well. To the castle slash arbalest combo. Although the arbalest seem more interested in again taking down housing. To the north. Light cab move in. They try to get these skirmishers. But they sandwich themselves right next to the stable. Camels move in the way left the tower up stay in your tower says doubt who is at 200 population to the 150 of his opponent mbl needs to get the numbers up he has 42 army supply but a quarter of that more than a quarter is on the water and if you look at the mini map there's a lot of action going on absolutely <laughs> none of it is on the water and so that is a lot of dead weight he may as well just pick up these ships and put them on his desk as a paperweight as the Hindustani takes this battle quite handily with the more powerful camel unit. Army supply, army count is indeed deceiving, especially when Doubt's entire army seems to be made up of arbalests and light cavalry units who are going to get countered hard by this Hindustani army. Uh, these two guys seem very unconcerned about the Treb that's right above them. Both Trebs yet again fall. Where are the other two? Apologies, not sure why it took me here. I guess there's one trip to the north, one trip to the south. Yeah, there it is. You kind of figure when you click a unit and it takes you here that it's kind of the middle point between them. Oh, look at that. Our navy has gotten quite small, in fact. Two castles. <laughs> Interesting. I, this is not a location I would have pegged uh, to place two castles, although I guess doubt wants to make this his uh, setting uh, what is the word i'm looking at? staging area wow by the way what an awesome awesome mountain for those of you uh ooh, one second rocketry rocketry is the upgrade that will add plus to attack to these chukanus who are already attack wise upgraded fully so they're gonna attack on a 14 14 attack although that just applies to the first arrow the other two will not do i believe they only do oh goodness gracious three pierce damage is zero melee castle for the hindustani is getting repaired 200 stone left but there are four trebs a few of them look like they're on the high ground that castle is not long for this world but i was about to say for those of you who uh read or watched the we wheel of time this certainly does look like dragon mount doesn't it i mean it could be rendered Maybe a little bit better around the edges, so it kind of seamlessly blends in. But oh, holy moly, elite Chukanus, 26 of them, attack-wise, fully upgraded. Ooh, just missing one more armor upgrade. And that is a pretty badass army, but so is this out of our Hindustani. I mean, it's a fairly basic army, not exactly the most unique of armies. So while they kind of posture against one another, oh, no, 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 no. Now it's Blue's turn to be on move command and look at all the arrows. Each one fires five arrows now. Okay, Red was on move command with his crossbows. Blue is on move command with his uh, skirmishers. So while they posture around one another, peacocking like the border between India and Pakistan, if you haven't seen that ceremony, definitely go onto YouTube afterwards and look it up. It is awesome to watch. Let's see what's going on around the edges of the map because it looks like a light cap tried to penetrate and die to the castle. Looks like these three should be able to get a good amount of kills, but my eyes are firmly fixed here to the east where four Trebs uh, made some big ball moves here, exposing themselves in the middle of nowhere. And MBL yet again has nine of his army supply tied into Navy, which is not attacking the docks. Okay, <laughs> it clicks in. I, I try not to be hard on the players because they are... Uh, look at the minimap. MBL is microing in about 10 different locations, which, by the way, if I tried, my hand would freeze up. I would fall over in my chair and uh, I'd have to get, like, resuscitated. So I try never really to criticize or sound... I, sometimes I sound like I am, but I'm not really. It's a difficult thing to to play at these elos and these elos are misleading. Doubt is not a 1488 player and MBL is not a 1611 player. I, in fact, think MBL at the time of us watching this game is the number one leader in Empire Wars, either him or Hera, but in they come. There's a Bombard Tower as well. Oh, insult to injuries as the camels run away and all of a sudden MBL's army is... 
I was gonna say seeking shelter, but uh, never mind. They just they just decide to GG. Okay, he's got in the docks. Good for you. Good for you. Let's see what's going on around the map because something's under attack here. What is under attack? Oh, it's the uh, mining camp. Look at that, just barely touching the line of the castle. Light cab raiding has begun. And yeah, I mean, if you're wondering why MBL resigned with still a fairly serviceable army, he's got no gold, but when your opponent's massing Chu canoes, you can go skirmishers. Unfortunately, no answer to this unit, but take a look at the villager kill count. Doubt has killed 102 villagers, probably with just the non-stop light cavalry raiding and throughout the game. We, we've been action bound since literally minute one and a half since that first scout died somewhere here on this morass somewhere here in this uh dirty pond scum we have just been full of action and ultimately when your opponent has a unique unit not quite yet upgraded to the hilt but upgraded uh, kind of 99 percent there I would take uh, the rocketry upgrade over the last armor upgrade, although, well, uh, agree to disagree if you disagree. And now you're being pushed into with Trebs of Bombard Tower, and you're down to 92 villagers, having lost 102, only being able to kill 26 of your opponents. But look at the final kill count, less than 10% apart. Doubt's killed fewer units on the whole, 275 to 298. Fantastic, fantastic action-packed game. And this is what happens when you have a game with a center area that's not accessible to land units. I don't care if it's uh, mountains or some kind of obstacle or just a big gaping black hole in the center of the map. If you've got two avenues of attack to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom, then you're always going to have an action packed map, especially one like this, which seems to be quite resource rich. There's a lot of stone on this map. Now, the Chinese do have one of the most useless i was gonna say least useful but for dramatic effect let's say <laughs> one of the most useless unique upgrades in the game and when i say useless i don't mean because it's not a good upgrade i just means nobody ever gets it it's called great wall and it does add 30 percent more hp to their walls and towers and uh on a map like this where it looks like stone is in uh yeah more abundant than gold We'll take a look at the economy in a second, but uh, that might not be a terrible upgrade for a map like this. And by the way, yeah, the, what I, uh, I, I love all of these various natural occurring geological features. 107 light caps, 67 skirmishers. This is, of course, number one is trash since we went into fair. I'm going to say fairly late game for Empire Wars, 42 minute game. 83 Arbalest, 51 Camels. Where are the Chukanus? There they are, 30, 63. And I thought these were... Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> so we, at the end of the day, did see a big ranged battle. And ultimately, our Chinese player just way too much on the economy and absolutely destroyed his opponent's economy. Even though his peak APM is fairly relaxed halfway through the game, MBL a few minutes before that, a little bit more APM. What, how, how bad do we think the economies are? <laughs> okay doubt has gotten two relics we'll see how many relics there are on the map he's got ten thousand more food eight thousand more sorry ten thousand more wood eight thousand more food five thousand more gold and an extra castle and a half's worth of stone so he's just ahead in all resources he's up about 40 something percent 45 percent if i had to do some quick math zero conversions look at that hello 16 buildings destroyed for both players. Watch me after talking a big game about how no one ever researches Great Wall. There's rocketry. Watch, uh, <laughs> watch Doubt have, having researched Great Wall. That would just be hilarious. That, that would be the icing to the cake, the cherry on the sundae uh, of this cast. But what an absolute fantastic map. MBL went balls to the wall on the water. And ultimately, he had a lot of his army count tied into this navy. And doubt with these stables just abused the mobility. Even though, again, one side does have the heavy camel, which doesn't move to... Oh my goodness, wait a second. A, I spy with my little eye a camel that doesn't have husbandry. Oh no. 
No wonder the light cavalry ran circles around these camels. 1.65 tiles per second to 1.45. Yikes. Did he never get husbandry? I mean, I don't need to look. I see it should be 1.6. <laughs> I don't need to look. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic uh, game play out of our Chinese who in this particular game, I think made all the right moves. He abandoned water when he needed to. He went back on water. I don't know if it was a serious attempt or if it was just an attempt to lure out even more naval power out of our Hindustani while he himself was getting ready to pump out a bunch of light cavalry units. So doubt possibly with some mind games here with the docks, but ultimately gave up water at the perfect time, raided the hell out of the Hindustani economy. And even though the Hindustani has the better unit here with the heavy camel rider, doubt just produced so much army and just could sacrifice it over and over again. I mean, everywhere you look in the blue base, there are just bodies littered everywhere. You're even to the back here. There's just dead, dead villagers, dead, dead everywhere. And with all of those dead, it is our Chinese player in red doubt who is victorious. But wow, what an awesome game. This is definitely a map I'm going to keep an eye on Dune Springs, but truly GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.